rockin' with the best. Hey, Fort Ben tutoring, 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 tutor me math dot net. Fort Ben tutoring, Fort Ben tutoring. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring and today's tutorial is going to be about finding the discriminant in quadratic equations, ladies and gentlemen, that's right, finding the discriminant when you're dealing with quadratic equations. So the discriminant, ladies and gentlemen, is actually just a small portion of the quadratic formula. In fact, it's only the radicand. That's right. So if you're thinking about the quadratic formula, you're just talking about the b squared minus 4ac portion of that formula. That's right. Now, there are different effects that you'll have on your solutions depending on the value of the discriminant. So you're wondering right now, why does my teacher, why do I have to learn about the discriminant? Well, you can start to predict the type and number of solutions you'll end up with when dealing with a quadratic equation. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, let's get to it. When you have a discriminant value, ladies and gentlemen, that is greater than zero, in other words, a positive number that's also a perfect square, then you'll end up with two real rational solutions. In other words, you'll have two x-intercepts. Mm -hmm. You sure will. So, on your graph of whatever quadratic equation you're dealing with, where your discriminant is a positive number that's also a perfect square, something like 1, 4, 16, 25, 49, 81, if the value of the discriminant is a perfect square like those, then you'll end up with two real rational solutions. Mm -hmm. Or you can just simply say that you'll end up with two x-intercepts. Yeah, I know, right? Interesting. So then, let's say that your discriminant value is a positive number, but it's not a perfect square. Well, you'll end up still having two x-intercepts, but you'll have two real irrational solutions. Mm -hmm. So there'll be some radicals in there. It'll look kind of funky. It won't come out nice and clean and cute like you prefer. Mm -hmm. But the, the answers will be right. Then let's look at if your discriminant value is equal to zero. Well, anytime your discriminant is equal to zero, you'll end up with one real rational solution. You'll just have one answer, okay? And on the graph, you'll see that you only have one x-intercept. All right, and if your discriminant value is less than zero, you'll end up with zero x-intercepts. That's right, you won't have any. And you'll have two imaginary complex solutions. So you'll be invoking the i, that's right, the imaginary number, in your solutions there. All right, so that's what you have to look forward to when you're dealing with the discriminant. So I have some examples. All right, six of them. So let me show you. In problem number one here, we have 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 equal to 0, and we're asked to find out the discriminant, what type of solutions we'll have, the number of solutions that we'll have. Well, first of all, you'll want your equation set equal to 0. You'll want it in descending order of the variable. In other words, you want it in the standard form of a quadratic equation. In other words, you want it in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals a zero. All right? And this equation is already in that form. So therefore, notice that the coefficients, all right, that a, b, and c are lined up just like we have it in our original problem. So my a value here is 2. My b value is negative 5. My c value is negative 3. And you'll plug those three values into the discriminants formula, which is b squared minus 4ac. So I have here negative 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 3. And you want to simplify this and find out what the value of your discriminant is. Then, simplifying, I have negative 5 squared. That gives me 25. This will be negative 4 times 2 times negative 3. That's going to give me a positive 24. So I end up with 49 as the result of my discriminant. Well, I know that my answer is positive, And I also know that 49 is a perfect square. Because 7 squared, in other words, 7 times 7, gives us 49. Since my answer is 49, and it's a positive perfect square, I know I'll end up with two real rational solutions. All right. In other words, I'll end up with two x-intercepts. All right, so it all depends on how they ask the question, but that's the answer, ladies and gentlemen. You'll end up with two real rational solutions, a.k.a. two x-intercepts. All right, let's move on to the next one. 
In example 2, we have 2x squared equals to 4 minus 7x. Remember, your first step is to set your equation equal to 0 and have your answer written in standard form. So I'm going to add 7x to both sides of the equal sign here. I'm going to subtract 4 to both sides. And I'll be able to rewrite this equation as 2x squared plus 7x minus 4 equals to 0. My values for a, b, and c are as follows. I'll have 2 for a, 7 for b, and negative 4 for c. Plugging those values into the discriminant formula, I'll end up with 7 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 4. Then simplifying, I have 49 and negative 4 times 2 times negative 4. That's going to give me a positive 32. Adding 49 and 32 together, you'll end up with, that's going to be 81. All right, you'll end up with 81. Because I end up with a positive perfect square, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to end up with two real rational solutions. Mm -hmm. Just like that. So let's go ahead and box up the value as well as what it means. Okay, so your discriminant is 81, and because it's a positive perfect square, you have two real rational solutions. And on to the next example. All right, in example three, I have 9x squared minus 6x plus 1 equals 0. My coefficients are 9, negative 6, as well as 1. Plugging these values into the discriminant formula will end up with negative 6 squared minus 4 times 9 times 1. This gives me 36 minus 36. Just like that. So your answer here is 0. Anytime you have a value that's 0 as your discriminant, you'll end up with one real rational solution. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and box that up. So my discriminant value is 0, and because it's 0, I end up with one real rational solution. That was problem number 3. All right, in problem number 4, we have our next problem. We'll end up, first of all, setting this equal to 0. I'm going to subtract 7 to both sides of my equal sign here. Yeah, all right. So I have x squared plus 4x minus 7 equals a 0. So my coefficients here, the a, b, and c values, they're going to be 1, 4, and negative 7. All right. So plugging those values into the discriminants formula, I'll end up with 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 7. You'll end up with 16 plus 28. Adding 16 and 28 together, you'll end up with 44. So my discriminant here is 44, which is a positive number, but it is not a perfect square. Since it's not a perfect square, you'll end up with two real irrational solutions. All right, getting here done. So my discriminant is 44, and because it's a positive number that's not a perfect square, I end up with two real irrational solutions. All right, that's the discriminant for problem number four. Let's look at our next example. In our next example, we have 5x squared minus 8x equals to 3. You want to start by subtracting 3 to both sides, set the equation equal to 0. You'll have 5x squared minus 8x minus 3 equals to 0. My coefficients are going to be 5, negative 8, as well as negative 3. Plugging these three values into the discriminant's formula, I'll end up with negative 8 squared minus 4 times 5 times negative 3. Simplifying, you'll have 64 plus 60. All right? And then adding those two values together there, 64 plus 60, that gives us 124. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, a positive number that is not a perfect square. So in this case, you'll end up with two real irrational solutions. And that's the answer to problem number five. Okay? All right. There you have it. Next problem. 
In our next problem, problem number six, we have x squared minus 2x plus 5. It's already set equal to 0, so therefore my coefficients will be 1 for a, negative 2 for b, and 5 for c. Going ahead and plugging those values into the discriminants formula, we'll end up with negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5. Simplifying this, we have 4 minus 20. Well, 4 minus 20, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be negative 16. So your discriminant's value is negative this time, all right? So you end up with a negative value as your discriminant. Since your value is negative, you'll end up with two imaginary complex solutions. All right, just like this. Remember that when your solutions are not real, you won't have any x-intercepts. So anytime your discriminant is negative, you're not going to have any x-intercepts that are real. They won't be on the graph. You won't be able to see them. Okay? So that's the answer. That's it. And so your discriminant value here is negative 16. You'll have two imaginary complex solutions. Uh-huh. And, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to conclude our lesson on discriminants. Finding the discriminant. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring. As always, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And if you're able, please donate. Peace. So what you waiting on? Everything is online. Just hit the website. They even got FaceTime. Subscribe to the YouTube. Request the video. Watch your math skills go from all right to incredible. They got math, got algebra, got geometry. Free calculus, can't forget trigonometry.